welcome back to my channel. It is week eight of my study abroad. Um, and this week I'm going to Austria, specifically Vienna and Salzburg. Um, but the beginning of the week started off like very simple. I got some bubble tea with my friends at Zenzu. I also went to a new cafe with Lydia, Han Solo, I think it's called Han Solo Cafe, um, where I had amazing toast. I love salmon, so like, that was delicious. I remember that one. And it was, um, I had a red velvet latte, which was really good. And I also went to Crepes and Waffles with one of my friends from lab. And uh, that was kind of the summary of my week. So for this weekend, Lydia, Faith, and I, just the three of us, flew to Austria and we flew into Vienna. We caught a early morning flight, so I didn't go to Dynamics that day. And that was the start of our little journey. we landed in Vienna we caught a taxi and it was one of those taxis where it's like the doors open and you get to sit in front of like you can space the people you're riding with so that was like kind of cool um, we got dropped off at our hostel which wasn't technically a hostel it was more of like it felt like a bed and breakfast type of place um, I believe Faith found it on Expedia but we checked into our like little our room which wasn't even at the location where we like the check-in desk was um we walked like around the corner and our like home for the weekend felt like this cute little cottage um it was just like adorable and it felt like i was we were in like a whole new world literally like it was like so white and we were staying with the seven dwarves um so it was like super super cute and like the beds were really soft and everything just had like this like quaint feel to it so after we dropped off our stuff then we crossed the river and walked in to check out more of the center of the city itself So in the center of the city, we visited a church. I believe it was St. Peter's Catholic Church. And we also got to see some of the um, monuments that are outside of that main like strip area for like shopping and tourists. So yeah, very beautiful church. <laughs> to the palace, the Austrian palace. But before we went in, we got a quick bite at this cafe called Cafe Clement. Um, there we had the Austrian cake. I'm gonna butcher this. I'm gonna do my best saying it. I think it is pronounced Sacitore. Sacitore. Sacitorte. Sacitorte? I don't know. Um, it's basically like this chocolate cake. And it was like okay. It wasn't too powerful. It didn't have a lot of sugar, which is kind of good, but I love sweets. And then I um we also ordered different like 
coffees. I think I got like whatever the normal, like the usual Austrian coffee is. And I actually really liked it a lot. Um, so after that, then we went into the palace, which I'm also gonna bust butcher the name of the palace. The, um, we went into the Hofburglane. Then we went on our self-guided tour. We had these like little phones <laughs> that we held up to our ear. We got to see basically all of the fine silverware, plates, glasses. Um, we saw like if the, the emperor was going to host guests from somewhere else, we saw how the table would be prepared for, I don't know, however many people on his court and anybody who was invited. And then we also got to go on a separate tour that I think it was, I want to say it was free or like the additional rate because we're students. It wasn't that much more expensive to also get a tour of the Sissy Museum. So we did that as well. Um, Sissy was the well-known empress of Austria and her she goes by her real name is Elizabeth but she goes by Sissy so we took a whole tour about her we weren't allowed to film anything in that um, part of the museum because it was more of like walking through a lot of things from the estate uh, it was really cool actually like I think I took the longest amount of time to go through because it was self-paced I just was blown away by the kind of rain that she had uh, and it's kind of sad the way she died I'm not gonna tell you but you can look that up yourself so I really remembered that and enjoying that and I also bought a book for my mom to read because I thought she would kind of like learning a little bit about the Austrian Empire <laughs> and then after the tour we left um, we actually we did something we weren't supposed to do there was a memorial that we wanted to take pictures by and it was kind of disrespectful actually the way we were like standing on it when you shouldn't be standing on it because it was during the time it's in memory of everybody who died all the soldiers who died during uh nazi germany and that time so we actually there was a student <laughs> who stopped us and she's like oh hey maybe could you not do that it'd be very much appreciated so we got down and she actually guided us to the St. Stephen's Cathedral, I think I said that right, um, which is like the cathedral with the big steeple, like the the, the big steeple like this. She guided us to St. Stephen's Cathedral, which if you know or know about any of the cathedrals in Austria or Vienna, um, it's the one that has a really like steep steeple, <laughs> funny steep. Um, so she actually guided us all the way over there. We got to chat with her and figure out like what she was doing in Vienna. She's studying. Um, and then we got to go on another little church tour, even though it was like close to closing time.
after our visit to the church, it was time to do what anyone would do in the evening if you were in Vienna. It was time for us to see a show. Now, to put this in perspective, you're in Vienna. This is like the heart, in my mind, the heart of classical music. And it's hard not to see a show. And the crazy thing is, when you're walking around in more of the touristy areas, the open squares, there's so many people out there trying to get you to go see a classical performance, whether it be an opera, an orchestra, um, a wind symphony. Literally, like you, you can't avoid the urge to go see one. So, to kick off our evening, we went to get dinner, of course. We walked over to the Palmen House to eat, and it was, um, I believe our reservation, like something got mixed up and we didn't have like the right, they didn't get our reservation or something, but we eventually got a seat and we had to be super quick. It was okay though. Um, and it was, I think it was a very beautiful venue because it was, it kind of felt like you were in a greenhouse. So it's a different environment and the chairs were so like loungy. It wasn't more of the dinner or bar setting. So I enjoyed that experience. The food was okay because I wasn't eating any meat. Um, so I was just like, yeah, I was all right. But I think I would go back. And then after that, we realized what time it was and we had to race all the way to our theater. So we were on quite a journey actually um, because we had to walk all the way there and we kind of got turned around in the dark. So we had to walk through this park to get to like the section that we wanted to be in the city but this park was closed off and we couldn't tell in the dark so we were like wandering around. We saw a statue of Mozart and then we saw like gates were closed and we're like oh my gosh and we had to like walk all the way around but eventually we made it to the show on time because our busy biggest worry was what if we arrive the show has started and then we can't get in so eventually we made it to the theater um the show i selected was actually um more of like a traditional show so it had a little bit of everything tchaikovsky which is of course what i wanted to hear in the evening um, had some Beethoven, might have had some Bach as well. And it was a quartet, and there was also an opera singer, she was beautiful, and there were two dancers, and it was traditional, um, I guess, could you say Austrian ballet? I'm not sure. But it wasn't like the typical Joffrey ballet that you see. Um, so I really enjoyed this more intimate setting versus being in a giant concert hall, which is normally like if I went to go see the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, what that would be. So. It was definitely a different experience and I really enjoyed it. I would definitely do it again. performance we had a long walk all the way back to our hostel or our place for the evening and we happened upon this like winter wonderland because it was still i guess the winter season it was cold um what month was it i think it was february one check one sec yeah so it was still february at this time so we were walking back to our place and we bumped into this whole little winter wonderland, this big like ice skating rink, and it was so cool. I like it had two different levels. I was really tempted to go, and I mean, of course, Lydia and Faith were too. But then we found out that uh, rentals were closed for the evening, so it was just like fun to see, and uh, made me want to ice skate so bad. But it's okay. There's always time for ice skating, just not while you're traveling. Maybe, but you gotta plan that out better.
as any good Sound of Music fan would know, or if you are a Mozart fan, you would know you, it's really difficult, it's hard to resist the urge to visit Austria, but not to visit Salzburg, of course. So what did we have to do? Get on a train and go all the way across Austria to Salzburg. So took a train early in the morning, had McDonald's, whatever there was to eat, and arrived in Salzburg a little bit later in the morning. We walked around quite a bunch and we went to go see some areas where if you remember children running around and skipping and singing in clothes that Maria had made out of curtains, right? So we went to go see some of these like monumental places within the Sound of Music and we also happened upon a monastery they had the, the most beautiful view like along the way up it had the stations of the cross and then at like the very top around the side there was this beautiful view of all of Salzburg um the, the city portion and we like grabbed some snacks and then we made our way across the river mind you we had like no real game plan other than just like being in Salzburg so we just went with the wind. <laughs> all the way to Mozart's birthplace and it had been turned into a museum and we went on the tour again no pictures or recording were allowed but I had to sneak a picture of Mozart's first violin my sister played the violin and I thought it was only right that I take a picture so I had to be like super stealth but I have a picture um of the violin it was pretty cool if you ask me uh, after that we went to go find a, like a bite to eat um more more of a snackish second breakfast type of thing and we went to this cafe it was really good but it was also slightly annoying because they would allow their customers to smoke it was like inside but open doors so i wasn't a big fan of that and yeah it's just smoke the lungs coughing that not pretty um after that we kept walking and we walked to the square um if i can remember which one it was that would be amazing <sighs> there was the resin residence flats um so that was one square that we went to and then we kept walking we walked past the Salzburg Cathedral we didn't go in it yet and then we went to the um 
basically in translation it's called the chapter square and there's this really cool statue of a giant ball and a guy standing on top of it i really don't know what the significance of that but it like reminded me of like somebody standing on top of the world so i'm not sure we grabbed another snack because we just this is a trip full of eating um we grab uh some pretzels um, covered in so much sugar and deliciousness and then we made our way i guess something unplanned up to the fortress within salzburg So we took a tram all the way up to the fortress and because we couldn't run through the hills and sing how they were alive with the sound of music like for our Maria, we actually got a surprising view we didn't expect at all. Um, and you'll see, we basically took a self-guided tour around this fortress and just took in all the view. We learned a little bit about how the fortress was built over time and how uh, it was basically protected from enemies. But mostly we were there for the view. My gosh, like I could look at it over and over again. It's something that seemed like out of a painting, not even real. The mountains were just so distant and far away, but just so incredible. So I definitely, well, my family's planning on going back there for vacation, but all COVID-19 had put our travels to a stop. Um, but it was just beautiful breathtaking quite literally a little chilly a little chilly but um wow and at the end of our tour we walked around a few little random museums and we found um a little yodeler <laughs> you know anything from the sound of music you know about the little marionettes and there's like a cute little song about a yodeler um yes high on a hill right um you're late so it was a little fun to see the marionette.
it was time to go. We made our two little tram trip down back into Salzburg and into the city. We walked to a cemetery nearby and we also got to visit the cathedral which had a beautiful dome. And then we walked, we heard or found out that they had a love lock bridge and we were we really wanted to find it locked so we could put one on but we couldn't find any and we were like went into like toy stores and a bunch of stuff couldn't find anything so we just walked across the bridge and we saw it and it was like i think it was like a really cute bridge thank goodness it wasn't falling apart or anything and then because we wanted to eat before we got on the train because it's kind of a trip um the only thing we could eat that was open i don't know remember like i really don't remember why it was like everything closed super early and we were not used to that because it's made like people don't start eating dinner until so like maybe eight maybe um so we ended up just eating italian food we went to an italian restaurant and we had pizza um really good pizza but we got on the train and we went back to vienna and in vienna long story short my sister and I hosted, uh, did an exchange program. We hosted a student from Austria. Her name was Lila. And so I told her, hey, I'd be in Vienna. And if she wanted to meet up, we could. So we met up and we got ice cream. Uh, I can't remember the place we got ice cream. It was really good though. We got ice cream at this place called uh, Zanoni and Zanoni. And it was really good. It was super sweet. It reminded me like, I love root beer floats and everything like that. And Oh, it was just really good and milkshakes that are just milk and the ice cream. So we had that and then we went to an Irish pub and we met up with another person that I knew from the exchange program. His name was Florian and we basically spent most of the evening there like into the morning. We were trying to save money so we had to check out of our like hotel, hostel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just in order to save like a good day. We basically took a taxi to the airport and slept at the airport. evening sleeping on chairs in the airport luckily the airport was open early enough that we could even get to our gate uh, and we flew out at 6 a.m. from Vienna back to Madrid <music> Thank you.
basically as a Sunday to explore. We really like didn't stay in Madrid that often. At this point, we had that one weekend that we were in Madrid, but we never had like the Sunday to like wander around and more or less be a tourist. So we went to Seoul and we saw some street performers and then even later in the evening because it was Sunday, I had to go to mass. We went to the church that is by Retiro that I believe is the only place that has evening masses at like seven or eight o'clock. It was the church of San Miguel y San Benito. Um, so I went there with Lydia and Kathleen and then we took uh, Lydia, Kathleen and I took Lydia to the first place that we had dinner when we were in Madrid which is like it's just so funny for us to look back like how confused and delirious Kathleen and I both were our like first night and that we had managed like find our way to this random restaurant um, and it was just nice going back and had a tiramisu I'm a sucker for tiramisu and that was basically week eight of my study abroad trip and next week I believe I stayed in Madrid because it was carnival um, we could have gone to Cadiz for it but we didn't we just stayed in the city and i think it was a pretty fun time so i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching and i hope you're doing all right especially during this crazy pandemic time um so stay healthy and happy and i'll see you guys next time bye